His entrances are iconic. On Solo, I'm Captain of the Millennium Falcon. His finger pointing, renowned. You find this man. You find this man. He's an actor of great comedic timing and great chemistry with his co-stars. I came here to save you. Oh yeah? And who's gonna come to save you, Junior? I told you. Don't call me Junior. Harrison Ford, a true icon of the silver screen and one of the highest grossing actors of all time. A role model to countless fans among our generation and portrayer of some of the most unforgettable characters in all of cinema. Earlier this year, Ford finished production on the highly anticipated fifth Indiana Jones movie. And while fans are aching to learn the story of that film, what of that of the man himself? Just what is the story of Harrison Ford? Born in 1942 Chicago to parents with some experience in radio acting, it wasn't until Ford signed up for a college drama class that his interest in acting really began. A self-described late bloomer, he only signed up for the class to overcome his shyness. Indeed, even to this day, he prefers a degree of privacy and never had any interest in directing or producing his own films. While his college friends were choosing the mundane life of being office workers, Ford became fascinated with the ever-changing challenges of being an actor. He soon earned his first paid acting work with the Belfry's players in Wisconsin, but quickly grew hungry for roles of higher sustenance. I wanted to do ambitious kinds of films. I wanted to uh, take on characters that were a bit more complicated and, uh, and uh, interesting. In late 1964, Harrison and his wife packed up the car and flipped a coin to decide whether they would go east to New York or west to Los Angeles. I came up east and had been raised in Chicago and I was sick and tired of the cold and so I said let's make it two out of three. In the years preceding his mainstream success, Ford paid the rent by taking odd jobs and the occasional bit part. In fact, when a stunned Michelle Phillips of the Mamas and the Papas first glimpsed Ford on screen in Star Wars, she shouted out, that's my pot dealer! And it was his work as a carpenter that ultimately set Harrison off on his path toward stardom. Ford had stumbled upon the trade when remodeling his own home in 1970, utilizing his local library to become a self-taught carpenter. He took care in his work, which became a form of meditation for him. And soon word spread throughout Hollywood of the Carpenter of the Stars. Sergio Mendez, James Caan, and Richard Dreyfuss were just a few of his high-profile clients. One day while doing work at Francis Ford Coppola's office, Ford was spotted by George Lucas, who had previously directed him in American Graffiti. Lucas was busy casting for Star Wars and decided to invite Ford to audition. Well, I'm not going to take you on an impossible chase across the galaxy. I was paid to bring you here, now you're here. Give me my other 5,000 and I'll be on my way. You're on your own, I'm on my own. As it turned out, Ford had outstanding chemistry with Mark Hamill and Carrie Fisher, and sci-fi's most iconic trifecta was soon cemented. Look, your worshipfulness, let's get one thing straight. I take orders from just one person, me. So one day you're still alive. Will somebody get this big walking carpet out of my way? No reward is worth this. Star Wars was the biggest film of all time. Han Solo, one of the most beloved characters of all time. And there was no turning back now. Harrison Ford was a movie star. Star Wars was probably the most important film in his career, but it wasn't the film that truly cemented Ford as one of the all-time legends of Hollywood. That film was right around the corner, and once again, it had George Lucas's name all over it. Lucas and Steven Spielberg had already picked Tom Selleck to play the snake-fearing, Nazi-fighting archaeologist of Raiders of the Lost Ark, but as fate and Selleck's prior obligations would have it, the role of Indiana Jones was to belong to Harrison Ford. Like Star Wars before it, Raiders of the Lost Ark was a smash hit, which remains to this day arguably the greatest action movie of all time. 
Raiders breathed a breath of fresh air to a genre that had long been dormant, spawning a whole slew of imitators. Everybody wanted to be indie, and everybody wanted Harrison Ford in their films. The actor continued to star in hit after hit throughout the 1980s, including the cult classic Blade Runner, an Academy Award-nominated performance in Witness, plus sequels to Star Wars and Raiders of the Lost Ark. The first Jones sequel, Temple of Doom, would test Ford's commitment as an action star as he suffered a severe spinal disc hernia. George Lucas later testified to his commitment. Harrison was in really terrible pain. He would be on the, on the set on a bed, and then they would sort of lift him up and get him, and he'd sort of walk through his things, and they'd get him back on the bed. And I said, this, we can't do this. Ford was ultimately forced to step away for five weeks to recover. Filming would continue in this time, with stuntman Vic Armstrong standing in for Ford until the actor was able to return. But Ford also had to suffer the humiliation of being whipped by Barbara Streisand in this hilarious practical joke from the set. Ford also demonstrated his range as an actor in dramatic work such as Mosquito Coast. He was so impressed by co-star River Phoenix, who played his character's son, that he recommended Phoenix for the role of young Indy in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. After the actor's premature death in 1993, Ford told the New York Times, I came to love him like a son and was proud to watch him grow into a man of such talent and integrity and compassion. Ford's status as a top tier action star would continue throughout the 90s with highly acclaimed films such as The Fugitive, Clear and Present Danger, and Air Force One. Get off my plane. And before long, Ford found himself the recipient of some well-deserved accolades. The American Film Institute's Lifetime Achievement Award in 2000 and the Golden Globe Cecil B. DeMille Award in 2003. Ford accepted these awards with humility, emphasizing the work of his collaborators and thanking those who believed in him early in his career. The so-called achievement, which I'm getting credit for tonight, is the result of of work that I've done with uh, incredibly talented people. People who had faith in me long before it was reasonable. People who gave me opportunities to grow and to learn. He also gave back to the world through volunteerism and humanitarianism in fields such as aviation, archeology, span and most of all, environmental conservation. Even addressing the United Nations on the issue. Greed is winning the battle for the Amazon. We need to restore what we have lost, and we need to defund the mechanisms, the perverse tax subsidies, the lending policies, and the institutional investments that fuel deforestation. Ford's career has continued to roll on in recent decades with acclaimed films such as What Lies Beneath and The Age of Adeline, but his biggest hits continue to be sequels to his earlier work. A fourth indie movie, Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, again brought in a whole boatload of money upon release in 2008. And in 2015, Ford finally returned to the role of Han Solo, more than 30 years on from Return of the Jedi. Chewie, we're home. Though Ford had always been enthusiastic about returning to Indiana Jones, he had grown tired of Han Solo's fanatic following over the years and had long pitched the character's death. Uh, he was not so interesting to me. I thought he should have died in the last one. George didn't think there was any future in dead Han toys. Though this new sequel trilogy produced by Disney was ultimately a letdown for fans, The Force Awakens was received favorably and Harrison Ford's inclusion was a big part of that. He then returned to the role of Rick Deckard for Blade Runner 2049 in 2017, plus a cameo in his fifth Star Wars movie. Following the 2020 coronavirus pandemic, Ford once again took up the fedora and whip of Indiana Jones. Though he again suffered an injury on the film, the 79-year-old had his co-stars in awe at his commitment to the physical role. Working with Harrison was uh, miraculous. He's a 78-year-old man who feels like a, like at least 20 years younger than me. Though Ford is already hard at work on his next projects, 1923, Shrinking, and Thunderbolts, it would appear that Indiana Jones 5 will be his final Indiana Jones movie. 
Harrison Ford has thrilled and entertained us all our lives. None of us will ever forget the characters he brought to life. Whether it was an everyday man or a larger-than-life character, he helped us to see a part of ourselves in the heroes he portrayed and made us want to be like them. So, thank you, Harrison Ford. We love your movies. We love you. I know 